information in uh, the Word document, you'll see that these 16 people were measured before they started the weight loss program and after they started the weight loss program. And we want to know if there is a significant difference in the mean weight of the, these people before and after they joined the weight loss program. Now, a little bit of a difference here. And that is, is that person number two, right, was measured before and after they lose weight. If we had randomly selected people out of these two populations, it's entirely possible that we could have got a person that was 218 pounds here and 223 pounds here, but then afterwards they, to start, but then afterwards they would have, uh, this, and this person would be after they lost the weight. This, this person would have been 218 before he lost the weight. This person might have been 223 after he lost the weight because he was selected randomly from a different, a different group. You know, the people that had been on a uh, diet, uh, uh, so on and so forth. And uh, But in reality, this guy might have lost 50 pounds. He might have been 273 before he started, right? Uh, and this guy might have been, uh, uh, might have put on three pounds, uh, was, started at 218 uh, and might have lost only five pounds, right? Uh, it's uh, There's a lot more variability when you're dealing with independent samples. Uh, when you are dealing with a situation where you have paired data, taking the same person, having an intervention, and measuring them again, you have a lot less, you eliminate a lot of confounding factors, gender, starting weight, uh, uh, age, so on and so forth, because he's the same age before and basically the same age before and after. He's the same gender before and after and so on and so forth. You're not uh, comparing, uh, you, you don't have uh, uh, six men and and um, uh, uh, 12 women, uh, 10 women in here, and uh, an even number of men and women in this, in the after group, right? They're actually comparable directly to one another. That's called paired data. One of the natures of paired data is there's always going to be the same number of people in the before group and the after group because it's the same people, right? In fact, if you were missing data, you would eliminate that person entirely. If you didn't have anything to put in here for Zafter, you just have SPSS or Excel or do it yourself and delete that data because that data wouldn't be of any use to you. Okay, so now we're going to give this, we're going to try this in SPSS. And there's a formula that's a bit different than the others for paired samples. Our T-score for paired sample is, uh, 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 well, it's funny. It says XD, the mean difference minus zero over the standard deviation of the difference divided by the square root of n. Boy, it's unusually simple, isn't it? Well, it's unusually simple because when you're dealing with paired samples, what you're really doing is you're finding the difference between these, this person before and after equals this minus this. Enter, and I'm going to fill down. Fill down. Okay, there's a couple of negatives. A couple of people gained weight. Most people lost weight. A couple of people gained weight here. See the negatives there, right? So we don't really, since these are, this is paired data, why even bother looking at it as two groups? What we're really interested in is whether the difference was greater than zero or, or uh, is, is different than zero. In other words, if, it's ze if you can't prove that the difference is zero, is different than zero, you can't say that this weight loss program worked. So our null hypothesis, H null, let me float this up a little bit. Our null hypothesis is going to be that the difference, the mean difference, is equal to zero. That there's no change in weight. Nobody gained or lost weight. And our alternative hypothesis is that H difference it is not equal to zero, that there was a change in weight. You know, since we're dealing with a, um, uh, uh, in this particular case, since we're dealing with weight loss and we're checking weight loss, you might be tempted to say that the mean, uh, uh, that X difference is greater than zero. In other words, that there was a positive, law, excuse me, uh, less than zero. That there was an uh, uh, that they weighed less afterwards than they weighed before. Uh, I'm sorry, the difference. Great, I 
I subtracted. Uh, it's greater than zero because I subtracted the starting weight from the ending weight. So if they lose weight, it's a positive number. So greater than zero, right? So really, in this case, you don't really have to work with two groups. You just work with the differences. And you have one standard deviation, which you can calculate from the sample. The standard deviation is equal to the, uh, the standard error is going to be equal to the square root of the standard deviation divided by the sample size, which is since it's only one group that you're, you're one group of numbers is going to be n, right? It's going to be 16, square root of 16, 4. And uh, you're going to calculate the differences. The difference are here, uh, this minus 0, which is the, the zero is the difference that you're proposing, right? Uh, the, the mean here, my, x bar, which is the mean here, minus 0 over the standard error, which is the standard deviation divided by the square root of 16, the sample size. Okay, SPSS will actually do that for you. I mean, Excel will actually do that for you. Equals t-test. Oh, I'm going to do it this way again. Let's do it this way. Just so I can get that prompting. Okay. Uh, 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 array number one. Actually, it'll use array number one and two. Okay. Hang on. Hang on a second. Don't get discouraged. Array number one and two. And tails, I'm going to call it, let's call it a one tail test this time. And the type is going to be one pair data. So it's actually going to base it on this single column as well. So I'm going to hit enter and let's see what we got. We got a probability of p-value of 0 0.0012. And that's a t-score. That's a, that's a pretty big t-score as we know for a sample size this big. So our p-value is less than 0 0.01. So do we reject the null hypothesis here? Right, guys? Reject or accept our null hypothesis. Is the difference equal to 0 or is it different than 0? Okay, probability that x bar, that uh, the mean difference is equal to 0, is less than 0 0.001. Okay, reject our null hypothesis exactly. So I'm going to do this quickly in SPSS. Okay, and again, this is just applications of these formulas. In this case, we, we applied the formula here for paired samples, okay, where we're only dealing with the dip column of differences and the standard deviation for the differences to get our t-score and see if our t-score was big enough to reject the null hypothesis. If it's a t-value uh, with degrees of freedom negative 1, if that t-value is bigger than what we would need for a 95% confidence interval or 5% chance of being wrong from the table. Okay, so let me get to SPSS here quickly. Okay, and I'm going to need that right now. I'm going to say, whoops, should have done that. Okay, open data, and I think it's going to be this one. There it is. Okay, before and after. In this case, SPSS does want the data side by side. It doesn't want before coded with ones and after coded with two because it needs to set that. It, that would be the way it would want it if there were independent data, but it needs to know that this value is matched up with this value. It's the same person before and after. So let's go to Analyze, Compare Means. This time we tried one sample t-test. We tried independent samples t-test, either with equal variance or the unequal variance. Now we're trying paired samples t-test. Okay, so it needs, paired samples need two variables to go in here. So one of the variables is before, and then the other variable is going to be after. And then we just say OK. It actually calculates it. And sure enough, we get the same p-value if I can find it here somewhere. Here's our significance. Our p-value is less than 0 0.002. Now, we had 0 0.001, right? Because Now, it's 0 0.002 here because it doubled the p-value because this is doing a two-tailed test. Okay? So it's a little bit more uh, uh, conservative. So instead of giving us a result of 0 0.001, one tail, it gave us... 0 0.001 at one tail, 0 0.001 to the other tail, added them together to say, oh, the probability of being wrong 
below or above is 0.002. Okay, and you can see that the confidence interval is 4 to 16, excluding zero, no difference, right? And you can see what the T value was and so on and so forth. Okay, so just one other thing here. I just want to open, reopen one file, and I just want to show you SPSS does an extra calculation for you. Open data. Let's see what I got here. Let's try number three. Okay, uh, now this particular one, two independent samples, right? This was the smokers and non-smokers. I'm going to go in here, analyze, compare means, independent samples. Doing this real quick, I realize it. Uh, machine output goes over here. Machine type goes over here. The grouping is one and two. We didn't do this one before. It's I guess it's the number of uh, uh, widgets that each each different type of machine can do. And we want to know if they're different. I'm going to say OK. It compares the two groups. It calculates the mean for group one, the mean for group two, standard deviation to group one, standard deviation to group two. Look, it looks like they're different, doesn't it? Uh, standard error for group one, standard error for group two. And then it calculates a T-score. Here's our T-scores. Actually, it calculates it twice. It actually calculates it in two different rows, a top row and a bottom row. Okay, The top row is all the calculations done using the formulas that you have from the uh, lecture for equal variances assumed. The bottom row is if you assume unequal variances. Equal variance is not assumed, and you use those formulas instead. A lot of times it's going to be that big a difference, right? So how do you decide which one of these two rows to use? Well, if I look up here, gee, standard deviation for uh, for machine type 1, with, uh, the results from each machine type 1 was 2.7, machine type 2 is 5.1. You know, I'm inclined, it's like two and a half times that. I'm inclined to say there's a lot more variability for machine type 2 than for machine type 1, but it's hard for me to quantify, isn't it? In fact, SPSS does a test called Levine's Test for the Equality of Variances. The way this test, and these four boxes, these boxes right here, these two boxes, F and significance. This F is not the F we're going to talk about next week, which we use F for ANOVA. They, they repeat these, these, these letters for similar but slightly different tests sometimes. So uh, this value, the statistical value is 7, and the significance, the probability is 1%, 1.6%, 1, uh, right? So what this e test for equality of variances is, is it tests the data in these two groups, and it says, how likely is it that these, given this result, that that would happen by chance, that really the variances are the same, and it just happens that in this particular sample that we got such a big difference. It does that test, and it does that test and tells us that the probability that you would get this outcome when the when the variability is the same is less than one less than five percent. In fact, there's only one point six percent of the time. So we would decide whether to use the top line or the bottom line the way we do almost everything else. We start with a null hypothesis. We start with equal variances assumed. So unless this test is so significant, it's less than 5% chance of being wrong, that these are really different, we would stick with the top line. So if this were 0.39, we'd stick with the top line. If this were 0.12, we'd stock with, stick with the top line. But this is 0.016. There's less than 5% chance that we would get this big a difference if there were equal variances. So we reject the top line or the the likelihood they're equal variances and use the bottom line instead. Not a lot of difference, right? Significance came out to be 0.198 instead of 0.192, right? But in either case, the significance